Okay, everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and I'm back for part two of the SLX programming setup and run. And uh, what we did in the first video, of course, is we looked at this spindle and how to program this so that we could make the part down to size, do the grooving, do the threading, so on and so forth, and showed you how to make the program. So what we're gonna do in this section is we're gonna show you how to set up your tools, how to set your part zero, how to save your tools, how to check your tool path, and look at the solid model. Okay, so to get started, first of all, I'm right where we left off, so I'm gonna hit the mode screen. I'm gonna to go to the setup mode, and in here, the very first button says tool setup. So I come in here and ask what tool number I wanna set up first. So I'm gonna use tool number one, and in here you'll notice there's a list that shows me all the different types of tools that I have for the lathe, and the first tool is just a right turn face tool. So I'm gonna select one for that as well, hit the set key, and now you see that there's an illustration of where I need to touch a tool off in both the X and the Z axis, okay? So I'm gonna set the part down here and I'm gonna grab my first tool, which is my right turn face tool. I'm gonna put it on the tool post. What I'm gonna do next is it's asking for an X value, so I'm gonna turn on the spindle, take a cut, move it away, shut it off, and measure, and that'll tell me what to put in the X axis, okay? Now you would use a mic if you were trying to be really, really close and precise on here, but I'm just gonna use, for this illustration, just use my calipers. So I'm at 950 thousandths. So I'm gonna put that in here, you see the value is right there, and then it's asking for the Z. So for my first tool, I'm actually gonna face off the part and establish Z zero with it right now, okay? So I'm gonna turn my spindle back on. and just tell it that Z zero. Now the last question it asks is what the radius is for the tool tip. This is very important when I'm cutting angles and arcs in the piece part. This has an 032 radius on it, so I'm gonna put that in here and push return. Now I'm gonna use the same process for each tool, but you're gonna notice that the illustration is different for depending on what it is that the tool looks like. Okay, so take off tool number one, put on tool number two, this is my grooving tool. And the same process, back to tool setup, tell tool number two, and in this case, my grooving tool is number 10 for OD groove. And you'll notice in the illustration that not only does it need to know where X and Z are, but it's also gonna ask me the width of the tool so that it knows how to fit it into the groove, okay? So same process. My X is now 945. And instead of cutting the Z axis because I want all the tools to have exactly the same number, I'm just gonna pinch a piece of paper. You could use a shim, you could use a black magic marker, bring it in until the color disappears, whatever works best for you. Right there, and I'm just gonna tell it that's zero. And there's no radius on this tool. However, the width is 093. Okay, that'll allow me to move it away again. Take my paper away, push return. And my third tool that I'm going to use is my OD thread tool. So I'll put tool number two back, grab my threading tool like so. And in here, go back to tool setup, tool number three. And this time I'm gonna use number seven, which is an OD thread. And notice in here that my Z zero is actually the end of my threading tool, not the point. It'll calculate that automatically, okay? So back to X first. Same process. Forty-five still, and then use a piece of paper for the Z again. All 
right there, Z0. So now all three of my tools are set up correctly and they're all set up using the same Z0. So from here on out, if I need to change where my Z0 is for a different piece part, I'm gonna do that in the DRO mode and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But for now, what I'm gonna do is push return and you'll notice that there's a button in here that says save tools. So when I push save tools, what that does is burn the offsets of those tools to the memory of the machine so that if tomorrow I turn the machine on and it's and I don't know where anything is at, all I have to do is take one of the tools for that are in my saved tools, touch it off in DRO and tell it this is where I'm at in X, this is where I'm at in Z, and then all the tools will follow and work in sync. Okay, so now that my tools are set, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to check your tool path. Okay, so I'm gonna go to tool path, and in here you'll see the entire part, but now you see how it's actually machining it, not just the outlines, right? So I'm gonna go to adjust view, and I'm gonna zoom this in a bunch, and I'm gonna move it over a bunch so that you can see it better like so. And you'll notice that it wraps in here and it roughs away the part. And then when it's all done, it finishes the outside of the part and then it takes a finish cut. Once it's done, it wraps to home, which I have set at six and six, shuts off, tells me to change tools. Then when I do that and I push uh, go again, it's gonna come back in, it's gonna do this groove work, go back home, shut off, change tools, and then it's gonna come in, it's gonna do the threading, okay? So right now, everything looks great. I'm not getting any kind of errors that say I did something wrong. Sometimes you will get that, like if you made a groove too small for the size of the grooving tool, it would tell you it wouldn't fit. Those kind of things happen when you go to toolpath, okay? So I'm gonna push return, and if I hit the back key, we have another feature in here that's called verify part. And in verify part, it's gonna show me a solid model with a simulation of what's gonna happen here, okay? So I'm gonna go to define stock first and see what we have in here for dimensions, and that all looks good. So I'm just gonna go to make part, and I'm gonna slow it down a little bit and then I'm gonna hit verify part and you'll see what it actually is going to do. And there you have it. So now you can see the whole part, how it's going to be made, everything on it looks correct. So I'm just gonna hit exit and say yes. And now I'm done with that part with the setup mode, okay? Now I wanna talk about one more thing right here. So if I hit return and I go to this button in the middle that says tool table, it shows me the tools that I have set up. You'll also notice that in red are tool number one, two, and three, because those are the ones in my program. And so those are the tools I just set up. But what I'm really showing you here is that I have modifiers in both the X and the Z axis. So let's say I cut the part and when I get done, I measure and it's 5,000 too big in diameter. Then I would just go to that tool, which in this case would be tool number one, I'd go to the X modifier and I'd put in there negative 5,000 and that'll adjust that particular tool 5,000 farther in so that when it cuts, it cuts to the right number. So I have modifiers in X and Z for every one of my tools and I can adjust them accordingly. And don't forget that when you make a change in here, when you're done, hit return and resave your tools so that it saves the change as well. Okay, so that pretty much covers on how we're going to do everything in here uh, for tool setup. And in the third and final video, we're gonna actually cut the part, show you how to use the tracking and the chip clear and the rest of that stuff and you'll get a really good feel for that too. So see me in the next video. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you want to see the next video, just check this one out over here. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.